All right, welcome to the presentation of John Golden Gay. It's going to be very exciting looking at his view of Old Testament theology. So, John Golden Gay, we're going to be looking at some key words here in this presentation that when you think of John, think of First Testament. That's what he calls it. He doesn't call it the Old Testament, but the First Testament. A uh, big idea for him is narrative. We also have story, diversity, yet unity, theocentric, on its own terms. Let's see how he wants to read the Old Testament on its own terms, uh, using multiple lenses and approaches. Cross-section me method, which we'll get into. Comprehensive, TIS, Theological Interpretation of Scripture. Theology for Today and ethics. All these are uh, big categories and big keywords for understanding John Golden Gay's uh, method of interpretation for the Old Testament. He was born in 1942, age so he's 77 years old. He has been a professor of Old Testament at Fuller Seminary since 1997, but he currently lives in the UK. Uh, for many years, he served as a priest in charge of St. Barnabas Episcopal Church in Pasadena. His areas of expertise are Isaiah, the Psalms, and Old Testament theology. And he has 203 works in 694 publications in four languages. So he is very, has been very busy with his life. And his most widely held work by libraries is his um, ICC commentary um, on Isaiah 40 through 55. He's also authored the Biblical Theology, uh, three-volume Old Testament Theology, and the 17-volume Old Testament for Everyone in that series, Old Testament for Everyone. Um, he's published a translation on the entire Old Testament, the First Testament, a new translation. So his approach in theology. Um, the first one, we'll look at multiple lenses and approaches. In his commentary on Isaiah, Golden Gay sets forward a number of lenses that the New Testament offers us through which to read Isaiah. They are Jesus, the church, ministry and mission, Israel, and the world lens. So Jesus, the church, ministry and mission, Israel, and the world. So those five lenses is what he uses. He thinks the New Testament offers those to read Isaiah and I think he would probably go as far as to, to read the whole Old Testament. He says, in one sense, the search for the right structure of Old Testament theology and for the central concept from which to view Old Testament faith as a whole has been fruitless or overfruitful, he says. While it is true that no such solution to the problem of structuring an Old Testament theology will illuminate the whole, a multiplicity of approaches will lead to a multiplicity of insights. So he doesn't think there's one central theme or figure or point of the Old Testament, but he does think that everyone that contributes in providing their own central theme uh, can give us a different perspective and insight, which is beneficial, even though it's not the only one. So multiple lenses and multiple approaches, he sees that as beneficial. And so he's, he's for, number two, he's for and against TIS, Theological Interpretation of Scripture. Um, now, what do we mean by that? In a conference address in 2012, Golden Gay noted that I am enthusiastic about theological interpretation. I want to urge that we see it as proper exegesis. But in light of that understanding, I want to make three points in relation to current views about the matter. Theological interpretation does not need to be Christocentric or Trinitarian or to be constrained by the rule of faith. So those three things, it doesn't need to be Christocentric, it doesn't need to be Trinitarian, and it doesn't need to be constrained by the rule of faith. Um, those are common things in TIS by, by many people in TIS. Uh, he just says it needs to be theological. He goes on to say on the first page of the main text in a recent book on theological interpretation of the Old Testament, Craig Bartholomew declares that any theological hermeneutic worth its salt must be Christocentric. Golden Gay's response is that, on the contrary, theological interpretation needs to be theocentric. 
So he concludes that the history of the church does not support the view that tradition has got it mostly right. So he's talking, it goes against the need for church tradition. He goes on to say theological interpretation needs to pay attention to the Christian tradition in order to broaden the horizon from which it works, but do not subordinate scripture to the tradition. So uh, that's Golden Gay's stance, and he goes on to kind of explain what he means by those things. But uh, one uh, journal article by Bennett, he argues, I think persuasively, that even though Golden Gay has made strong claims against the use of creeds, the rule of faith, and church traditions, uh, Golden Gay interprets the Bible in the way he announce, denounces. So Bennett points out, uh, Golden Gay's recognition of our own placement while reading the text by quoting Golden Gay as follows. We come to gain insight into things, texts, or people or events in light of the convictions, questions, and experiences that we bring to them. This need not mean we impose the convictions, questions, or experiences on them. They are ways to gain insight on the inherent significance of the text or people and events. So Golden Gay commenting on Paul's appeal to Abraham in Romans 4. In lieu of his conversion rights, Paul's argument seems exe exegetically sound. He thus illustrates the way a new experience or act of God or question can indeed open up exegetical understanding. So um, in those ways, we can see Golden Gate actually do kind of affirming that you do interpret it from where you're at and do interpret it based on the traditions that you and experiences that you've uh, that you've had, even though he kind of denounces that we shouldn't do that in some ways. So just an interesting side-by-side uh, -side between Bennett's argument that he, Golden Gate kind of does what he says he's, he doesn't. All right, let's move on to point number three, his theology for today. Um, rejecting the either-or of a descriptive or normative method. Rather, he opts for the middle ground concluding that the task of Old Testament theology is to mediate between the religion of the Old Testament and the religion we believe and practice today. So it's a, it's a both and, it's a middle ground between the religion of the Old Testament and what we believe today. It's both and descriptive and normative, and how he understands that is through his narrative approach, I think. Golden Gay goes on to say for theology for today, it is actually unrealistic to maintain that the Old Testament, Old Testament theology should be purely descriptive discipline. It inevitably involves the contemporary explication of the biblical material. And then fourth, in its own right, i.e. historical and literal. An example of his historical and literal approach can be seen in his understanding of Isaiah 9. In its own right, rather than as a prediction, about the Messiahship, Jesus of Nazareth. So that's one example. One reviewer points out to, to exemplifies his historical little approaches, his understanding of Isaiah 9 in its own right, rather than inputting Christological or Messiahship of Jesus back into it. Um, Christopher Seitz actually critiques Golden Gate's focus on the literal sense, saying Aquinas uh, rightly worried that the literal sense of the Old Testament could be so historicized that it would lose its capacity to speak of Christ economically and ontologically. And the providence of God means that more than what a single authorial mind could ever totally apprehend in the nature of the case. And he appeals to, uh, cites appeals to Isaiah 55, 11 and Zechariah 1, 6 to say that God means more than the human author could mean totally comprehend or apprehend. So Seitz critiques uh, Golden Gay's literal historical um, approach. So let's talk about number five, his cross-section method of theology. So uh, one reviewer uh, put me on to this idea that Golden Gay takes further Eichrott's uh, cross-section method. So his cross-section approach is preferable. Preferable is the view that Old Testament theology seeks the lowest common denominator of the various versions of the Old, Test Old Testament faith. 
that entity into which all the insights that emerge at various points in the Old Testament can find a place because it is large enough to combine them all. It does so taking seriously the historical particularity of the Old Testament statements, yet setting those in broader context shaped by the Old Testament's total range of particular concrete theological statements. So um, he seeks the lowest common denominator of various versions of Old Testament faith. So he sees the diversity within the Old Testament itself and shows you based on the historical and narrative context what is being taught in that specific place and places those beside each other. And he does this in his Old Testament the theology in three volumes. So here's an overview of what those three volumes do. John Golden Gate explores Old Testament theology as a narrative, volume one, belief, volume two, and ethos, volume three. The first volume focuses on the story of God's dealings with Israel or Israel's gospel. The second volume investigates the beliefs of Israel or Israel's faith. The third volume discusses Old Testament perspective on life that Israel should live in its present and future, including its worship, prayer, spirituality, practices, attitudes, and ethics before God. These are his three um, volumes, Israel's gospel, which is the narrative story, Israel's faith, and Israel's life uh, ethics, volume three. Israel's gospel is narrative. Israel's faith is what they, Israel believed. And this is what they should do, Israel's life ethics and how that applies to us today. Raymer on volume one says, this weighty volume, the prolific and at times profound, Golden Gate embarks on a trilogy of epic proportions. I think that's it's very apt. The projected volumes are sketched. Thus, the, the latter prophets, wisdom books, and psalms provide a starting point for the reflective theology of the second volume. The Psalms and Torah are the primary vehicle for the ethical theology of the third. So we have the later prophets, wisdom books, and Psalms in the second one, in the second volume, and the Psalms and the Torah in the third primarily. In the first volume, Golden Gates focuses on the narrative traditions of what he prefers to call the First Testament. Although this is an explicitly Christian work, and Golden Gay is uh, frank about his Christian perspective, he also contends that the task of attending to the the, the 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 task of attending to the theology of the first testament makes sense only when it is heard on its own terms, or at least when the attempt is made to do so. So, noting that it might be somewhat a goal that's somewhat unattainable, knowing that we know the rest of the story coming from a Christian uh, New Testament perspective. It is a story in ten parts. God began, started over, promised, delivered, sealed, gave, accommodated, wrestled, preserved, and sent. Golden Gate still includes much that is not narrative when it intersects with the story being told. So even though his focus is on narrative, um, he does include non-narrative portions. Obviously, there's non-narrative in the Old Testament, but this is how you kind of see one reviewer sees Golden Gate's 10 parts, as I just uh, said. Let's look at his narrative and application ethics. Narrative and application ethics. So John Golden Gate is on the more uh, side of praxis, uh, like House, uh, Paul House and Kaiser. He begins with the word God. His chapter headings each begin with God as a subject and are followed by a predicate. God started over. God wrestled. Golden Gate could be ex expected, like House, to be a minimalist in highlighting the praxis, ideals for the faith community. However, he is not. So this is an interesting thing because Golden Gate is very uh, going with the literal historical, um, which would be, uh, which you might think that he might not apply it to today. Um, but he does. But uh, hardly, if at all, one, con one reviewer says, does Golden Gate draw applications for the current community's faith life? More typical is an observation such as the following. The theological perspective Gen Genesis offers readers is not a lesson in resolving conflict within families, but a promise that conflict is not the end of the world. So there are going to be more general praxis theological statements 
instead of um, current life application. Again, the, new, the, new, the First Testament is not as interested in passing moral judgments on its characters as it is seeing on how God works at a purpose through them in their moral ambu ambiguity. Golden Gate, it seems, would concur with Paul Ricoeur's notion that stories are not to be read as prescribing ethics or mandating behavior, but as opening up a range of ethical possibilities and hence debate about them. Golden Gate echoes Ricoeur when he says, the absence of moral judgment from the stories draws the readers into them to make their, their own judgments as they set these stories alongside the stories of their own lives. Um, so some people have hit Golden Gay for this somewhat postmodern appealing to literary criticism, records idea. Um, but this is his, his view of narrative, how narrative works. It's not passing uh, moral judgments on its characters, but you're invited to go live within the story. However, what they, that's kind of vague what that means, but basically um, kind of figure out the morals as you go in some ways. Outstanding features first, uh, story. This is a you know, feature of his. Foremost in the category of story is John Golden Gay's sizable volume, Old Testament Theology, Israel's Gospel. One large advantage of story over the historicist approach is that the writer avoids entanglement with questions of historical reliability. A second advantage is that in a postmodern age, that is skeptical of rationalist only perspective, story is most appealing. Also in the majority of the world, as in Africa, story is very much an essential in ethnic group identity. And this is uh, from one comment, one reviewer, all these, these benefits, which I, I think agree with his assessment of his benefits of story. And the third is for a culture that is less and less biblically literate, story offers an easy entree into the Old Testament. A fourth and considerable advantage of the story approach is that the sense of dynamic movement is not lost. Rather, it can be readily shown how the older traditions were adopted and adapted in new situations. Fifth, as some would argue, the narrative approach is a corrective to approaches that have majored on the didactic. Finally, the story within the Old Testament is incomplete, hence the bridge to the New Testament is easily made. I think those are all five good benefits of Golden Gate's uh, focus on story. Another feature of his is that his volumes are comprehensive. Quite, uh, Christopher cites on his review of volume one, the decision to treat all texts and to try to let them each have a say requires an ambitious organizational structure. Ambitious to say the least. McFarlane on volume three notes, his knowledge of the Old Testament is extensive. And this book, as we see from the bibliography, he has also brought to bear the many forces available to share with the reader. This is an excellent book for seminary courses and also for both pastors and laity. This book and the entire trilogy are a joyful read, providing countless hours of matters uh, theological on which to ponder and to grow. And one reviewer says, while at times his commentary may seem to wander from topic to topic, his individual insights make the book worth reading. As such, one need not read his book chapter by chapter. Rather, especially if one isn't intimidated by the book's size, one can dip into those sections of central interest to the reader, using the book as a resource rather than a monograph. So it's very comprehensive. It goes from topic to co topic. Um, it'd probably be very hard to read when one's sitting straight through in, you know. So another outstanding feature of Golden Guys we mentioned is his application. One reviewer says, I find his analysis more relevant to where believers live and to those Old Testament theologies that focus simply on Old Testament institutions, such as covenant and temple. And number four, egalitarian and New Testament consideration. One reviewer notes that the chapter on Israel focuses on God's people as inclusive and egalitarian, which is very interesting. Um, I think that is an outstanding feature, not necessarily a strength that you might agree, agree or disagree with that, but that is notable. And also, he ends each chapter with a consideration of New Testament understanding of these themes. Um, I think that's a, an interesting, I think, uh, an apt, good point. I think it could be under strengths as well.
So weaknesses, um, again, his narrative and story approach is a strength, but it also, can also be a weakness. A major problem of the narrative approach to doing theology is how to derive a theology from story, as one reviewer notes. As far as ethics is concerned, is it is clear that not every story is normative for Christian ethics. Similarly, Old Testament stories are not in themselves theologically normative. So how this is, I mean, it, it's the question of vaguety of how do you derive ethics from narrative, which Golden Gay seems to do. Um, also, we talked about his, his not anti-history, but um, he kind of skirts the issue of history by focusing on narrative. What do we do? Or is there historical matters? These things uh, do seem important, but he doesn't really seem to address them. Uh, as as it is comprehensive, this length can also be um, a negative. In Sites Review Volume 1, he says the decision to treat all texts and to try to let them each have a say requires an ambitious organizational structure, as we said. The downside of this, it makes for a very lengthy treatment whose audience and context for usage, preaching, introductory text and seminary, uh, general introduction, he thinks these are unclear. It tends to overwhelm the material in the sheer ambition and rhetorical style. Uh, number three, Sight says, it makes for a necessary commitment on the part of the reader to stay with the whole plot line, now over 800 pages in length. But as we said before, you can kind of just go jump in to where you want to, where you're interested at. You don't have to read it straight through. It is like a long, personal, intelligent account of what this material means to me and what it might also mean to you. If you find my approach engaging and true, I think that's pretty accurate. This is a long, personal, intelligent account of what this material means to me and what it might also mean to you if you find my approach engaging and true. Um, narrative and other genres. Um, incidentally, one reviewer says, it gave this reader pause to consider why the Old Testament does not pursue narrative only in its final canonical form, but prefers to uh, mix the variety of genres, law, poetry, and meditation. So basically, if a Golden Gate's big thing is narrative, and narrative is so important, it seems to minimize the other genres. And why did the Bible use those if that if narrative is the if is the genre? <clears throat> One reviewer points out a small uh, issue. He says that. Um, about Golden Gate's comments on music in the temple uh, is just interesting. Does Golden Gate see an Old Testament priority? Um, one reviewer says, there is a rather odd conclusion that the Old Testament is more missionary minded than the New Testament. I, I don't know, I've never thought about that. And it did seem kind of odd to think the Old Testament is more missionary minded than the New Testament. Maybe he's right. One reviewer said, I did find myself chuckling at Golden Gate's description of the New Testament as being, quote, a series of ecclesial footnotes to the Old Testament. So the New Testament is just footnotes to the Old Testament. Quite a statement, you know. Maybe he's using some rhetoric there. Proof texting without justification. Uh, one reviewer, most of his discussion is an exposition or a close reading of select passages while pointing to other biblical cross-references to confirm his points. He does not try to justify why certain passages are selected over others, except that they illustrate the stated themes. Uh, Stephen B. Chapman on the third volume, he says, Finally, Golden Gate's Old Testament ethics. This is first-rate, thrilling stuff, the appropriate culmination of a glittering trilogy. Very high praise. So hopefully this was helpful for you to deepen your understanding of how you do Old Testament theology um, for, from learning from a scholar, John Golden Gay, who you may disagree at points, but uh, nonetheless has uh, worked hard and studied long hours from a Christian perspective on what the Old Testament means and how to apply that to our lives. So uh, this was beneficial for me and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys next time.